How is BT approaching the telco edge and what kind of partnerships and relationships does it need to fulfil its plans? Let's find out from Neil McRae. He's BT's chief architect and MD of architecture and technology strategy. So Neil, let's start with a, a, a big picture question. Um, there's often a lot of focus put on the technology and infrastructure of the telco edge and not usually so much on the related economics or the return on investment. Um, does the industry need to focus more on what we call the, the edgenomics, the, the revenue potential and ROI of edge investments? Hi, Ray. Yeah, I mean, I think edgenomics and, and return on investment in this space is, is crucially important. The way I tend to look at this, though, is, is, is you know, edge is a new thing. Um, we're not certain what it's going to do. We're not certain the shape of it's going to be. So we're really looking at this with flexibility in mind. And, and typically, you know, and in, in very much in telco, we're probably over-indexed on cost and cost out. Not that those things aren't important, of course they're important. Um, but in my mind, it's about what does this capability give us that we didn't have before? And if I add certain things to it, what more can I build on? And I think for me, the, the, the flexibility of that model over the next six months, 12 months, two years is probably going to change as we understand what use cases and what different methods and and, and platforms that we can build that leverage edge. And, and I think that flexibility and that um, keen eye on the edgenomics, ensuring that the entire value chain is able to benefit, make a return, invest in the next thing is going to be really important. And, and I'm quite excited about it because it's, it's probably one of the biggest changes in, in telecommunications and, and the whole supply chain of the internet and connectivity that we've seen for many, many years. Absolutely. So um, with that in mind, I mean, does BT, the BT Group have an official edge computing strategy right now? Uh, and if so, to what extent does that include a revenue generation aspect as well as the operational and efficiency targets? Well, I always, you know, cost is super important. Reducing cost and being economical um, is a critical thing for a service provider. I think too often in our industry, Ray, that's where we start. Oh, we'll take cost out. You know, if I think of the whole NFV, that started about cost out when actually it was more about getting things to market quicker and, and easier. Um, and, and the cost benefits be almost were a side effect. So. I try to look at how do I shape this new thing I'm doing so that it, it answers, the, you know, four or five different parts of, of the business case, if you like. So how is it going to generate me more revenue? How is it going to add to ARPU? How is it going to add to um, shareholder value? How is it going to um, generate the next piece of revenue? Then how is it going to take cost out? I look at all of those things. So when I look at it from a... a you know, pure cost point of view, probably the biggest area that Edge will tackle, first of all, is is increasingly, you know, the cost to deliver video. Um, Edge CDN is, is, you know, will be something that will always be an anchor tenant uh, to Edge and Edge economics. And, you know, today um, we're, we're delivering that closer to the customer. Um, tomorrow, I think we'll, we'll, with 4K and potentially 8K HDR, 3D content, virtual reality video, we're going to have to move that closer and closer to the edge. And, and I think CDN, or, or, as, or as I'm kind of calling it, interactive CDN, a two-way CDN, um, where you're, as well as pushing things to customers, you're kind of pulling from them as well. Um, I think that's going to be a, a crucial thing. And, and, you know, yes, absolutely be cost to, to, to save there. But, you know, if I'm you know, watching Disney Plus and The Mandalorians on, I want to be able to watch that with the greatest quality. I also want to be ensured that, you know, as the content owner, I want to make sure the experience is great. I want to make sure that there are no rebuffering or freezes or any of the stuff that frustrates um, people who watch online content. So so that's an area of focus for us, for, for sure. But then we're looking at, you know, how can we do more 
as a platform business in areas like healthcare and data services, um, whereby we can use the network and the advantages of the network to deliver services using Edge that can add value um, to our, our, our existing customers and to new markets um, such as health and such as the whole data science and, and analytics area. Okay. So, I mean, you, you've obviously, you, you talked about the anchor tenant there, that, that application, that service that, that's driving what you've done so far. So to, to what extent is that being delivered and managed on BT's own assets, uh, its own edge compute platform, or how, are you blending that and, and merging that with any assets from, from partners or, or other relationships? Yeah, it's it's a it's a bit of both, um, Ray. So we're using our own platform to deliver our own uh, BT content, which is predominantly through BT Sport. Um, we're also working with partners who are, and the way that we're trying to work with this is we ask a partner to stand the service up and get it up and running and, and iron out all the bugs and, and, the, and the issues, and then we do like you know what we call an operational handover, where we bring this in. To, to the core BT operation. Um, and then we have partners that want to do it themselves, that will always probably want to do it themselves. You know, um, our great friends at Netflix who are, you know, they, they, they've got a big infrastructure, they know what they're doing, they want to have control over it. So I think we'll see those sort of models uh, moving forward. Clearly what we can't do is effectively have a data center that never ends. You know, data centers are, are heavy, you know, high, high capex areas to invest in, you know, the kind of cloud compute, the density requires a lot of power. Now we've got space in our, in our exchanges uh, that we can use for this. And, and, and we're looking at that. Um, but there's some constraints that, that we've, that, that we're, that we're going to have in, in our ability to deliver every single thing, um, that, that we might choose. So so focusing that on what's really valuable is um, absolutely going to be an important as part of that, you know, own use versus, you know, working with partners. Over time, um, I want to be able to offer an edge compute service that's ran by BT that any developer can jump on board, much like they, they do with, with Amazon or, or Google Cloud and, and run an application um, that's perhaps more suited to being, you know, close to the network in transportation and logistics and in, in, in kind of, um, you know, um, video surveillance and security where being close to the, to the network makes a lot of sense. Okay, excellent. So you, know, you, you mentioned some of the big hyperscalers there and obviously one of the, the, the big debates currently and one of the big trends is relationships between telcos and those large public cloud companies. Um, how do you see the that kind of relationship? Do you see it as something as, as symbiotic? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, and, and this, you know, that was the, the kind of earlier point I was making, which is we need to learn to work with those big edge, those big public cloud companies, and but they also need to work more with us. Um, I absolutely think if we're going to get the most out of the edge, wherever you draw the edge, you know, even in even in the center of the network, it, 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 you know, in a city close by, a, an exchange close by, a cell tower close by, or or even actually on a customer premise, um, you know, these are all edges in my mind, and and because of the complexity of that, because of the the various different methods of delivery, I think working with the, the public cloud providers and then you know engaging closely with us is is just absolutely going to have to happen otherwise you know customers won't see the value in some of the services that, that they they need to offer and some of these high demand either in latency or availability they just won't be able to deliver them uh, and we see the public cloud guys starting to create products or solutions you know, that, that kind of bend into that area. And, and you know, we're talking to, we're, we're a big partner of Amazon um, for our IT and we're, we're working with them on on how that might work. N nothing decided yet, but a lot of a lot of interest from their side. Google as well, 
um, particularly with with their Anthos platform, where where you know again you can see opportunities to deploy it. Um, I think the whole model about how we do business with our customers or their customers, and then we as the service provider, them as the as the as the IaaS provider or cloud provider. You know, I mentioned this earlier on the flexibility in that whole business model. I think is what we've got to collaborate on. And again, ensure that we maximize the benefit, firstly, for our customers, secondly, um, for us as BT, but with our partners. You know, we really believe in, in the, a partnership where you invest together, you win together, but you also lose together. Um, and that's the sort of partnership we really want to have with um, the big cloud players and, and, you know, including Microsoft as well, of course, because they're a significant player in this space and also getting bigger in telco. Absolutely. Okay. And, and, and you mentioned BT's customers there. Um, and obviously, we, we've talked already about video and BT Sport. Uh, but what about the, the enterprise side of things? Are you getting any demands or requests or, or guidance from uh, companies in enterprise verticals about what they would like to see in terms of services or, or capabilities? I think the best thing that would be that we could happen is they come and say, "Hey Neil, I need this, this, and this." The reality is, is much, much that, much that I don't know a lot about their business. They don't know a lot about what we can actually offer them. So, so what we've been doing, and and we've been working um, on this for for probably about two years now, we've been really engaging with companies. Um, and building collaborative teams, and and you know the last DSP and, and many other interviews I've done with Yuri, I've always flagged this need to collaborate, and and in this space we're ha you know we are collaborating with our customers to co innovate, um, bringing BT know how where that's appropriate, bringing in other partners, you know experts in their field or experts in certain problem solving or experts in cloud to that mix and. You know, actually, through our through our enterprise and global services business, you know, that's something we've been doing for quite, you know, almost a decade, even more perhaps. So we're used to working in that model, but it's a much closer engagement with the customer, understanding the true process the customer has, understanding the core business outcome or problem that the customer's trying to solve, but but even just being embedded with the customer. And just noticing something that says, hey, we've noticed that you guys struggle with communication in your warehouse. You know, we can fix that for you. Um, and we can add some data services so that you can do automatic um, asset tracking in your in your factories. Oh, we didn't know you could do that. Um, you, know, it, it, you know, I'm an expert in telecommunications and digital services. I'm not an expert in logistics. I'm not an expert in running a, a port that, that where container ships come in and out. And and you have to engage with those experts to figure out where the where the big prizes are. But what I can say is is there are big prizes. Um, there's efficiency. There's 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 cost reduction. There's there's speed to deployment and speed to market. Um, you know if if you can you know if I look at the the, the port example, if you can get containers off a ship quicker, you know you can you can transact your goods quicker. Um, you know, you can you can sell your goods out to the market quicker if you can make that whole process faster. And there is huge interest in that, especially in a world where you click on something online and it arrives the next day. It's it's and 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 in this world where you know for, for the foreseeable future we're we're probably going to be working more more and more at home. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the pet potential does seem enormous. Uh, and and what you talked about there, the sort of the the management of, of assets, of course, is in, uh, is very important. Um, to what extent are, are you seeing useful developments from the, uh, the the telecom vendor or application developer community that can help with that in terms of you know multi-platform visibility and management of of compute and storage assets? Is there anything particular that you're seeing that can help with your edge strategy? I think yes. I mean, I think we see from from many um, organizations, you know, more capable tooling, either to enable developers themselves to do their own pipelining in an edge compute way, 
or to match. You know, we see a lot about location. Where is where is the the eyeball and how do I link them to the nearest edge device? We see a lot of activity in that. Um, and and but but I think we need to see more. And I think this is one thing where you know the, the world the work that we did over the past couple of years with DCMS and the government to build these five G test beds. You know, a lot of people say, why are you building a 5G testbed? Surely it's a radio and a phone. That wasn't the purpose of that. The purpose of these was about these use cases, about understanding, okay, to make to make an efficiency game in something like farming, what needs to be true and where does the network play a part in that? But what other devices and other sensors or other uh, categories do we need? So we absolutely see, you know, almost a, a kind of a new breed of, of startups to some extent both, you know, completely organic, but also startup businesses and some of the, the network operators where they're looking at this opportunity. Quite a lot of it focused on kind of IoT business because obviously that's a, uh, you know, a strength or a or an adjacent market that, that the telco vendors can, can react to. Um, but we're also seeing, you know, completely new organizations come into this space. So NVIDIA. You know, NVIDIA, you know, I'm a, I'm a big video gamer, as you know, Ray, and, and NVIDIA are really at the heart of video gaming. They make fantastic um, graphics cards, but those graphics cards can also be put into an edge device and you can use it for three dimensional product development. Um, in a world where we've got 3D printers and very fast turnaround of prototyping, you know, that kind of new inbound technology that was never really thought of in this mode is really exciting for us um and you know during the day the 3d designers are using it to to, to build new products and in the at night when everyone comes home we can use the same equipment to, to to deploy 3d video games so we get the real the real power of the cloud at the edge and reusing that infrastructure so yes i think we see those things coming in i think i'd love to see more of it it's one of the reasons why i've been really upbeat about 5g is because i'm trying to really pull in companies that might not have even considered this space to think about actually if i bring the network in what more could i do what things that were impossible become possible um and, and for me it's it's one of the most exciting times in, in our industry um to really understand that and then add ai and data and boom you know i much much like you know when we launched 4G we were you know we thought it was all going to be about web browsing and the reality is it was about everything but web browsing and I, I can't help but be excited about what those new tools and capabilities are going to be for industry um, and how our customers help service their customers. Absolutely and I couldn't agree more 5G is about so much more than smartphones and, and faster mobile broadband and and that's where the, the, the real opportunities lie. Um, so Neil, great speaking to you today. Thanks for giving us an update on where BT is in, in, in its edge strategy and how it's thinking about this part of the market. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up again. And, uh, and next time I'm sure things will have moved on an awful lot further again. So thanks very much. Thanks, Ray.